Now tell me, who doesn't love a nice, long lie-in? Ah, those rare days where we get to stay in bed as late as we want, and not have to worry about getting up. Now, this evening's story looks at this from a different perspective. Just how long do you think you could stay in bed? Quite a while, I don't doubt. But wouldn't you eventually get bored? Or maybe even worse? Well, tonight's tale takes this to its logical conclusion. Bit of a weird one for you this evening, I warn you now. You may not get all the answers you're looking for, but it will surely make you think. So, sit back and relax with your favourite drink, my friends. Because it's time to listen. Three months ago, I made the spontaneous decision to get myself involved in an experiment. I am required to lie on a bed for six straight months, while sleeping at least twelve hours a day. While I was walking down my street to catch a cab to work, a man approached me with a big smile on his face. He asked me if I wanted to make a hundred and fifty thousand in six months. Intrigued, I asked him what I had to do. With a smile, he told me to go with him to his office, about three minutes away, walking distance. Now, I promise I'm not one of those to just follow anyone to a location I know nothing about. But South Korea is equipped with cameras all over the streets and roads. Just to be safe, I texted my buddy, who worked right beside me, to call the cops if I didn't call him within the next two hours and I texted him the address of the office once we got there. Feeling assured that I had all of my bases covered, I followed the man into the building. When we got inside, I was amazed by how white everything was. The desks, floors, ceiling, walls, chairs, and even the outfits that the workers wore inside were all solid white. I couldn't help but stare at everything while we walked towards the back of the building. When we got to the back hallway of the building, I noticed everything was white here, except for the doors. There are three doors in the back, and each door is a different color. The first door is blue, the second is yellow, and the last is red. He stops in front of the blue door and opens it. Holy shit. Everything in the room is solid blue. I also notice that there is a huge bed with blankets, pillows, and a frame, all of which are completely blue. It really looks like a normal bedroom, with a TV in front of the bed and a laptop in the middle of the bed. He pulled out two chairs and patted on one as he sat on the other. I sat down beside him and he pulled out a piece of paper. The word rules was written on top with a list and a line for me to sign at the bottom. The list of rules stated the following. Number one, you will not be able to leave your bed during the six months you are here. Number two, you are to sleep for at least 12 hours a day. Number three, you have access to the laptop and your phone, but you must never reveal what you are doing. Number four, every two months we will move your bed to another room. We will move you, but it's very important that you stay in the same position you are in while you were lying down. Number five. When you receive your food, you may put your head up to eat, but at least half of your back must be on the bed. Number six. If you need to use the restroom, press the button on the side of the bed. We have a way for you to use the restroom without you having to leave the bed. 
Number seven. If you feel sick, press the button twice and we will send someone to assist you. And number eight. Once the six months is up, you will be given 150,000 on a credit card. If you lose the card, we will not be able to replace it for you. Sign here. I felt a little weird about having to stay in bed for six months, but I do love to sleep, and being paid to sleep for 12 hours seems like a complete luxury. Plus, I will still be able to use a laptop and my phone while I'm lying down, so I won't be bored at all. I can just log into my Netflix and watch every single show I've been meaning to watch. I call up my buddy and tell him I'm quitting my job and that I found a better opportunity. He asked me what it was, but I'd already hung up on him by then. I let my manager know I'm quitting as well, and hang up on him while he was cussing me out and screaming at me about how I completely screwed his team up. I know I just ruined my chances of ever going back to my job, and also getting another job in Korea, but once this six months is up, I'm going back to the States, and finally starting my own restaurant. Once I signed the contract, the man handed me a pair of white pajamas. I changed into the pajamas and got on the bed. The first three weeks go by, and I start to run out of things to watch on the laptop. I don't have anyone to talk to, and my buddy has stopped talking to me when I wouldn't tell him where I'm working now. I've never been close to my family, and whenever I try calling my mother and father, they don't pick up the phone. The strange thing is, no matter how bored I am, I still feel somewhat happy. I think about how much the money will change my life. I daydream about running a successful restaurant and making a successful chain after a couple of years. I turn on the TV and start flipping through the channels. I get distracted watching this show about people flipping shit over having their cars towed for the next two hours, and before I know it a person in white comes in and injects me with something that makes me fall asleep. I haven't dreamt in the past three weeks, but today I finally had a dream. I'm standing next to my mother and father in a flea market. The same place I used to go with my parents once a week until I was 13. We are looking at a couple of turtles to get for my aquarium when the man behind the counter approaches us. He points at one particular turtle and tells me this is the turtle I should take home. He turns it around to reveal the face of the turtle and I start to shake. It looks like a turtle everywhere else, but the face. The face it had belonged to my old best friend, who killed himself when he was 24. He overdosed on heroin in the dorm room we were staying in together, the day before graduation. The turtle turned its face to me, and slowly closed its eyes while his tongue slid out all the way to the middle of his shell. I woke up in a cold sweat, but immediately felt a wave of peace, as I knew it was all a dream. For the rest of the first two months in the blue room, I had the same exact dream, but for some reason as soon as I woke up, I would automatically feel at peace. When the timer went off, signifying that it was the end of two months, they took me to the yellow room. Two men came in and changed my diaper. <laughs> Embarrassing, but true. And took me to the room while I stayed in the same position. The man that brought me here was sitting on the desk waiting for me. He smiles at me and tells me that I am doing perfectly well. As long as I keep still on the bed, it will all be over before I know it. Everything was the same in this room as the previous room, 
but everything in here was solid yellow. The first two weeks in the new room, I did not have that horrible dream, but I felt a little sad that I had another four months to go. I just really wish I'd followed what my father wanted me to do and go into law. He already had a firm set up, and he was willing to offer me a six-figure salary on a silver platter. He offered to pay for my schooling, but my hard-headed self decided to major in English. Oh, I remember how betrayed I felt when my best friend died. He was my only friend. And now, he's gone. I've never found a woman that liked me, making me still wait for my first date at the age of 24. <sighs> I've successfully wasted the first third of my life on absolute nonsense. The night of the 16th day in this room, I finally had a dream. I'm outside of my dorm room in college. I find the key to my room in my hand, so I put it in the keyhole and open the door. My friend is sitting on the bed, sobbing into his hands. I walk up to him and start patting him on the shoulder and telling him everything will be okay. He starts screaming. No, it won't. Nothing will ever get better. Then he slowly lifts his face up at me and I stand there in shock. His eyes are full of sadness, but he has an inhuman smile on his face. His lips are stretched out and ripped open to reach the middle of his cheeks, and the bottom of his lip is torn to his chin. He slowly licks the bottom of his teeth, before he grabs me and screams at the top of his lungs at me as his blood hits me on the face. This dream comes to me for the rest of the time I'm in the yellow room, and each time I get more and more depressed about what he says. Nothing will ever get better, and I know that's the truth. I can make my own restaurant, but it'll probably fail. I will be broke again, and now I won't have an opportunity to work in Korea because I ruined the one reference I had. After the two months is up, the timer goes off once more, and the same two workers lift me up and take me to the final room. Once again, I see the man sitting at the desk. Last room, my man. After this, you are done, he says, and leaves the room. I look around the room and see that it is identical to the other two rooms, but red this time. I did not dream for almost the whole two months I've been in here, but anger has completely taken over all of my emotions. Why the fuck would a father kick his son out of the house for not choosing the career he wanted? I was never a bad kid and I never got in trouble. Whenever I struggled in the past couple of years and asked for some help, all I got was the phone hung up on me. Everyone that I have loved has left me or fucked me over. My first crush in high school laughed in my face when I asked her to the prom. <sighs> I fucking hate everyone now. And I just hope they can never feel happiness again. Last night, I had a dream. It was the last night I spend in here. I am standing in front of my friend. I know what had happened already, by the smirk on his face. He's gone behind my back once again, and has decided to go to law school, and was just guaranteed the job my dad wanted to give me, to him. 
He has just finished gloating in my face about how much more successful he will be than me. And how he just remained my friend through high school and college, so he could pursue his greatest passion. He told me how my father told him he was the son he wished he'd had. I already knew about it all before I came into the room. My father called me while I was in the car, driving to my dorm, telling me how he has no use for me anymore, and for me to go ahead and get all my stuff out of his house before the end of the week. Once he is done bragging, he lays on his bed and goes to sleep. I creep to his bed with a needle, completely filled with heroin, and find a vein. I slide the needle in fast and inject all of the heroin into the vein on his neck. <laughs> I woke up with a smile on my face. I think the red room is my favorite. Well, I warned you it was a weird one, didn't I? So, no definitive conclusion or anything. What do you think happened to him? Did he just go mad? What would happen when he does eventually get out of that bed? Looking forward to reading all your comments on this one. So, don't be shy. Write something down below, and I'll make sure to read and reply. That's it for me this evening. Um, I'll be back on Wednesday with the second installment of uh, my early recordings. My greatest hits, or misses, if you like to think of it that way. But I'll be back with another longer story on Friday. Until then, bye-bye.